Hello everybody. Yes, the doors of the church is open. Come on in. We're so delighted that you tuned our way once again. We pray and trust that this teleclass will be a blessing to you and to yours. Uh, please hit that share or like button. And then let me know that you're appreciating what we're doing and send out a little encouragement to your pastor. Thank you again for tuning in. And then I also want to give a special shout out to Shatera Pryor and Donald Hopkins for their great job in our media team. So if you see them, please congratulate them for it. Come on, let's enjoy worship today. and worship time, y'all. Let's give God some praise this morning.
be in the house one more time. Good, glad to be here one more time. Our responsible reading will come from the 150th number of Psalm. We just say thank you. Be in the house one more time. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the furnace of his fire. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the patriot and harp. Praise him upon the loud symbol. Praise him upon the high sounding symbol. Let everything on earth as we pray. Jesus alone. Prayer comes from Dr. Love. With head bowed and uplifted heart, Lord, we come in reverence to thy glorious and mighty name. Come thanking you for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Lord, we come thanking you for another chance to get it right, another chance to make a difference in someone else's life, another chance to move on up a little higher, another chance for you to forgive us of all of our sins. Now, Lord, we just pray that you will continue to look on us with an eye pit in the heart of mercy. For we love you today, Lord. We thank you for being God, the one that's omnipotent with all power, the one that is omniscient, that's all-knowing, the one that's omnipresent, that's everywhere at the same time. Lord, thank you. Look now, if you will, everywhere. People are living in chaotic condition. Many are calling on you from the hospital. They're calling on you from the jailhouse. They're even calling on you from the alleyway. Lord, will you listen to the voice of our cry? I believe you will, and I know you can. Now, Lord, touch us with the finger of your divine love. Just one touch from you many times will make everything all right. Yeah, just one touch from you will soothe our sorrow and carry our grief away. Now, Lord, now, Lord, New hope needs you right now. Yeah, touch the shepherd in a mighty way. Please, Jesus, let him down in the deep tread of your wood. Yeah, that the foreign train 
will be able to have a better life. Please, sir, to have mercy. Lord, we thank you today for being real. We thank you today for being by our side. We thank you right now for holding our hand along this Jesus journey. Oh, Lord, because somebody here got questions with no answers. Somebody here got problems with no solutions. But, oh, Lord, we know, we know if we look up to the hills from whence coming our help. Oh, Lord, all of our help, Lord, come from you. Please, Lord, hold our hand while we run this race. It get hard sometimes. People get mean sometimes. But, oh, Lord, I know you able. I know you can fix it. Now, Lord, now, Lord, Move, move, move everywhere. Move as only you can with the power that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just thank you. We can't pay you. But we can thank you. Pray right now that you would receive this your servant prayer in the mighty, matchless, miraculous, marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's praise him for real. God, thank you for keeping me during grief and despair when I had questions but no answers. Has God kept anybody from danger seen and unseen, through sickness and diseases? I've survived COVID twice. Has he kept anybody? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for being God and for being our keeper. God, you're worthy. Thank you for keeping me. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up on your feet. Let's think back. Let's think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. to know that God is keeping me
Come on, if you know he did it, give him praise like he did it. If he did what no other power could do, come on, give him worship, give him praise, give him thanks for his mighty acts. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. We thank God for today. Come on, let's worship God. Give him a hand clap of praise, if you will. Come on, God deserves a much better praise than what you're giving him right now. Certainly, we celebrate our music ministry for ushering us into worship on today. Certainly, thank God for our special guest, Miss Pamela. She blessed us with the Lord is keeping us. Somebody know he is a keeper. And certainly, we thank God for our praise team for blessing us with another powerful, powerful word. Grateful to have all of our preachers sharing with us and our officers and deacons. Beloved mothers, and to you, our sisters and brothers. If you'll stand with us for the reading, reverence, and respect for the Word of God, we're going to continue our series in the book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Now let's do these verses responsibly. 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. And in the 20 and 7th year of Asa the king of Judah did Zimri reign seven days in Tirzah. And the people were encamped against Gilbetham, which belongs to the Philistines. Orah went up from Gilbethem, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. For his sin, which he sinned in the doing evil in the sight of the Lord, and walking in the ways of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he did to make Israel to sin together. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad we've already got our worship taking place and already... Praise and celebrate God because this is another tough message today. I want to text with the subject, suicide is not an option. Suicide is not an option. If there's something that we've seen too many times in our society, is that people are taking their own life. Many of us have been touched by someone that has committed suicide. And we know the emptiness, the loneliness that we feel when we wish we could have done more, said something, done something, or anything to change the circumstances. It hit all races. There was a time in which when we read or heard about somebody committing suicide, we knew it wasn't of this race. Uh, but now it's of all races, all gender. Matters not if you're rich or poor. Rich folks are taking themselves out, as well as those that are in poverty. And even as I stand here, uh, there are some of you who have contemplated um, calling it quits and throwing in the tie. Some of you have thought about quitting in life, just giving up, gone calling it quits. What's the use of hanging around? 
And it ain't just people who are in the world. The people that look like you and I. That come to church every Sunday. No scripture, no Bible. Know what the Lord says. But they're gripped with this contemplation on giving up and calling it quits. I don't know who I'm talking to, but we need to address this. There are some who need professional help. Ten years ago, I wouldn't say what I'm saying now, but I will say this, that there are times in which you need professional help. Listen, I'll pray for you. There are times in which I'm counseling people. Sometimes I grab my head and say, boy, I don't know what to say. I can pray with you. But there are times in which you need medical and professional help. Now, I'm not disguarding or dismissing the spiritual. You need the spiritual too. But I believe God is calling us to use every resource available. And this message I want to share with you today is that suicide, giving up, is not an option. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you can share this with somebody. Maybe you can put this in your deep future, but I will tell you this. Life is difficult. Life is hard. And if the truth be told, sometimes all of us feel like giving up. Sometimes all of us want to say, what's the use? And we are seeing it more and more, even with our young people, who in our mind have their lives ahead of them. And we wonder what could be so bad to make a person want to give up. I need about two or three of y'all that know it's real. But you can get into the dark side of life and things will get so dark that you feel hopeless. But I'm glad I got good religion. Because I know because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. But what do you do when that song don't move you in the midst of your darkness? But let me give you a couple of points and let me share with you about this king by the name of Zimri. Zimri, if you were at the 8 o'clock worship, Zimri killed King Elah. I know it's difficult keeping up with all these names, but just ride with me here. He overtook the kingdom the wrong way. And you do know when you do wrong, wrong will come back on. The world call it karma, but those in the spiritual realm, we know you reap what you, what you sow. And so you be careful of the seeds that you sow because it will come back to you. And so he kills the king. Now he's the king, but here's something here. It shows the power of the people. The people knew he was wrong. And so the people got together. I think I need to say that 52 more times. And the people got together. You see, the devil know if we can ever get together. We can overthrow some injustice and some wrong and some unrighteousness if we will just come together. That's why he works to divide us. But if we understand we are fighting on the same team. 
We may be seeing things different, but we have the same agenda. And so the people come together. And they go after Zimri. Zimri, he holds the record of being the shortest king as it relates to reign. He only reigned as king for seven days. This is the shortest reign that you ever find for a king of Israel. Seven days. And so Amra goes after Zimri. The people get together and they surround him. He is hemmed in. And he's at a place where some of us are. We feel that we're hemmed in. And we can't get out. It's hopeless. We have no chance. And our back is against the wall. What do you do? When life seems fertile, yeah. hopeless, and you are at a point of despair, where do, where do you run? When you don't know where to run to. Yeah. But do you go, Doc Love, as you said in your prayer, when you got questions and no answers, yeah. and problems and no solution, what do you do when you reach a point of despair? couple of points here and I'll get out of your way. Because giving up, although he was wrong, he still had some other options. He, he did not have to choose this option of suicide. First thing I see in verse 18, if you hadn't closed your Bible, is that he failed to look beyond what he saw. Look at verse 18, if you will. And it came to pass when Zimri saw. He failed to look beyond what he could see. He is overwhelmed because of what he sees. But child of God, you've got to learn to look beyond what you see. I used to be nearsighted and farsighted too. But when you start walking in faith, you see beyond what is. I'm in trouble now, but I know weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. I'm broke now, but I know it won't always be like it is. I wish I had some help here. You got to have visions of deliverance. You got to see yourself better than what you are right now. You got to have vision beyond what is. Because the facts can say one thing, but how many know faith can say a whole nother thing? And when you're walking in faith, faith and facts don't always mix, but I've come to know if you are a faith walker, just keep on walking. If you are one who believes and knowing and understanding that what is, does not have to be your final destination. It does not have to be your final stop. Look at what David says. Yea, though I walk through, it's not a pit stop. It's not where I'm stopping. It's what I'm going through. Look like I'm going to have to pull this off by myself. But you got to be able to see Beyond your circumstance. Beyond your situation. Even when it's hopeless 
and frugal. You got to see beyond that. You got to see yourself well, even when you're sick. You got to see yourself prosperous, even when you're in prosperity. You got to see yourself working on the job even when you are jobless. You got to see beyond. I wish I had somebody in here seeing. I'm trying to get y'all to see what I see. I wish I had somebody seeing what I see because if you seeing what I see, you wouldn't be sitting there looking at me like I'm in a fishbowl. If you are seeing what I'm seeing, you know what is is not going to always be. Can I tell you sometime my praise my praise ain't always what is happening now. My praise sometimes is what's going to happen. And this worship and this praise that I'm giving God right now is what he is on the way. If there ain't anybody in here no eyes hadn't seen, ears hadn't heard either, have been entered into the heart of them who love the Lord. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly Above that which ye can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I wish I had about three of y'all in here able to see beyond your circumstance. Because giving up is not an option. But not only does he look, he should have looked beyond his circumstances. Looking beyond what he Sees. But then, secondly, don't succumb to overwhelming circumstances. I'm still right there in verse 18. They got them pinned in. Overcoming circumstances. Watch what he does. He sets a fire. To burn the palace and himself. He overcomes to the situation. Not understanding, especially as African American people, we've been in hard times before. Don't make me pull your card today. I know where your grandmama live. I know what hood you come out of. We know what hard times is about. We've been, and some of us I'm talking to, have been through the worst of it. You know what it's like. Having to make it from can to can. You know what it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know what it's like to have all your bills spread out and trying to decide who get paid and who don't get paid. I wish I had about three of y'all who know something about hard times. What the devil tries to do when it shows up Try to act like this the first time you've been in that situation. Come on, 11 o'clock. This is not the first time you've lost a job. This is not the first time that your heart has been broken. This is not the first time that your friends have deceived you. You've been there before and I'm not going to trip now because the same God that brought me out then he's able to bring me out now if he did it once he can do it again there ain't anybody in here no he's the God that can do it again. I got about five of y'all who know over and over. I wish I had time to give my testimony. But over and over, 
God has brought me out. He's delivered me. He's made ways out of nowhere. I wish I could give you the mic right here. I wish I could pass it around the house because I'm looking at some people who know something about being in circumstances that were overwhelming. But when your heart is overcome, the psalmist said, lead me to the rock that is higher than thee. I know there's a song out that says when everything else fails, I can go to the rock. Let me shortcut you a little bit on that song. Everything else will fail. But you've got to know that the rock will be there. And I've come to know sometimes you won't know he's all you need until he's all you got. Where are my folks in here? who know he's all you got. And if he's all you got, you know he's all you need. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. So he does not. He allows the circumstances to allow him to be overcome. He succumbs to overwhelming circumstances. Not understanding that trouble don't last always. That it will come to pass. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. If you just hang on in there, this too shall pass. You'll laugh again. You'll smile again. Your heart will rejoice again. The sun will shine again. You got to even know that even when it's cloudy, that the sun is still shining. You just hang on in there. He succumbs to overwhelming circumstances, but then... Thirdly, you must avoid permanent solution. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. He allowed a temporary problem to allow him to come to a permanent solution. And the best way he thought was to take his own own life. I heard Dr. Radcliffe say, I, I thought about homicide, but I never really thought about suicide. So before I do some harm to myself, I'll do harm to somebody Somebody else. I wish I would hurt myself because a woman don't want me. A man don't want me. I wish I would. I'll do respect to Lady Hop, but if she decide she won't hit the door. I spend my days, couple of days, weeping and wailing. But after those days, I'm going to somewhere find my prayer closet, pick myself up, straighten my back, and wipe tears from my eyes. Go on and scrub my stuff. And know within my heart she left the best thing that ever happened. Y'all ought to help me preach this. I'm talking about y'all, ain't I? I know in my heart that if she do better than me, if she find better than me, 
I ain't going to say that. Y'all know where I was going. But, but I'm not going to check out because somebody don't love me. You can't make folks love you. I've come to know you got to have some love for yourself and love yourself enough. I'm sorry, y'all. I love me some me. I love me enough that I won't hurt myself. I'm trying to help myself. And if there's anything in my life that's hurting me, I want to eliminate it. He makes a dreadful mistake. He wants to solve this problem with a permanent solution. Not understanding. Wish I would. Hurt myself because I can't pay my bill. That's their problem. I, I wish I would hurt myself because I'm I lost the job. The same God that opened the door. Preach, Pastor. I'm doing the best I can. Can open another door. Now I've got about 10 or 12 y'all in here know that when he closed one door. When he closed one door, get ready because another door is getting ready to open. Because God will take care of his child. Is there anybody with David's testimony? I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsake. Or their seed begging bread because God is a keeper. Won't he keep you? I said, Won't he keep you? And I've discovered it ain't Jehovah job, but it's Jehovah job that's keeping me. It ain't my family. It ain't my money, but it's God keeping me, help me new hope before I close this out. If you know that God is keeping you, come on, help me give him some praise. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I know who my way maker is. I know where my shelter is. I know where my bread is. Is there anybody know him? Is he all right? Yeah. Let me leave you when I tell you. He looked beyond. But he, he could not look beyond what he saw. He succumbed to overwhelming situation. He should have avoided a permanent solution. And I leave you when I tell you. Know that suicide is sin. Look at verse 19. For his sin which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. God is not pleased. When we take matters in our hands such as that, the test come only to try us. God want to know if you're going to trust him. If you're going to lean on him. 
He's not trying to drown you. He's trying to teach you how to swim. We don't come here learning how to lean on him. But it's a process. You know how the Lord teaches us how to lean on him? He starts removing people and things that we do lean on. He start moving parents, spouse, family, friends, finances, health. He start moving things that we were leaning on. So all we got is to lean on him. I want to tell somebody, if that's where you are, you're in a good place. Because everything else is false security. Everything else you think you can lean on is only false security. The only thing that's solid, the only thing that has foundation is the Lord. The songwriter said time is filled with swift transition. No, don't nerve on move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Malachi 3 says, I am the Lord God, I change not. Hebrews 13 and 8 said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Today and forever. If we're going to make it in this life, we got to learn how to lead. The Lord will give us what we need. If we learn how to look up. Because if we look in, we get distressed. If we look down, we get depressed. If we look around, we get stressed. But if we look up, we find rest. I will lift up my eyes towards the hills from which cometh my help. Oh, oh, oh. Anybody know where your help comes from? All of my help come from the Lord. So as long as I live while trouble, trouble rise, I will hate unto his throne. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if thou will draw thyself from me, whether shall I go? Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me, lead me on, and let me stay. I get weak. And I am tired, but Lord, take my hand and lead me, and lead me on. Is there anybody know he's able to listen to what the scripture says? 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says we have... No temptation that we are common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able, but with the temptation will make a way of escape that we might be able 
to bear it. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 said, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hebrews 4 and 16 said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Psalms 34 and 19 said many are the affliction of the righteous but the Lord I wish I had some Bible readers but the Lord delivers them from them all can I tell you what's in your future you got deliverance in your future and can I tell you don't wait until trouble is over go on and shout now go on and tell him thank you for what he is on the way is there anybody feeling deliverance is on the way God said it in his word and because he said it I believe it and I I, I, I ain't gonna wait until I get there but while I'm on my way I'm gonna go ahead and have a praise party new hope will you go in with me let's give God the best praise we're giving let's give God a strong praise whatever it is that you've been praying for whatever it is that you've been waiting on whatever it is that you've been trusting God to do go on and praise him like you already got it I don't know what you've been asking him but give it your best praise just like He's already done it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for what's on the way. Your credit is good with me. I don't know when it's going to show up, but as long as I know that it's on the way, I can praise him because so many times I waited on the Lord and he showed up where my folks at who waited on the Lord didn't you hear what the scripture said had thou not heard had thou not known the Lord creator of the end of the earth fainteth not neither is he weary there's no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and them that have no power he increases 
bear strength young men and old men shall utterly fall down but they but they but they that wait on the Lord what will he do I said what will he do he will renew your strength and mount up yeah yeah mount up with wings as eagles run and not be weary walk and not faint wait 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 I say on the Lord won't it show up I said won't it show up Come on, help me. If you know, he'll show up. Help me in your pew. Because there's somebody in your pew that's waiting on the Lord. Be a witness to somebody and let them know he will come through. He will show up won't it show up I said won't it show up won't it show up I said won't it show up and when it show up he'll show out yeah oh bless his name come on bless his name listen you come too far from where you started from to give up now. The old saint says, I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. Y'all, I done come too far. I'm 50 years old. I can't start tripping on God now. I've got decades behind me now. But I can look and see where he's brought me from. And y'all, at this juncture, the devil should have killed me when he had me. And when he, when he had chance. But now I done seen too much. I done heard too much. I done felt too much. And I know. Boy, I feel like preaching. I know what God can do. You can't make me doubt him. I know. I said I know. I know too much about it. So I can't, I can't give up now. Because I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. believe brought me this far y'all too many hills too many mountains too many struggles he done brought me out of can't give up come on stand all over the house we extend the invitation we invite you to come I don't know who I was speaking to this is your chance your opportunity to unite with this fellowship 